Hey, bonjour à tous. Tout va bien? Ça va? This video presents the essential skills that a novice requires to conduct an avalanche search. Basic training can be carried out in around 20 minutes. In the car park, the leader checks that everyone in the group is properly equipped. Each person should be carrying a shovel, a probe and an avalanche transceiver in good working order. We recommend you carry a modern transceiver with three antennae and a mark function. Let's see. Right, Juju, that one's not great. I'll give you a better one. This one's stronger. Keep all your electronic devices at least 20 centimeters away from the transceiver when it's emitting. That should be 50 centimeters when it's in search mode. Now this camera can cause interference, so you should carry the transceiver in your trouser pocket and zip it up securely. The participants swap telephone numbers. The rescue service number is usually on the ski pass. If you can't get a signal on your own network, try calling 112. Before setting out, the leader checks the transceivers can send and receive a signal. After each lengthy break, they should check everyone is still in send mode. With the group leader in send mode, the participants turn their transceivers to search and go past one at a time, reading out the numbers on the screen. When they are one meter away, their display should read less than two. Then they switch their transceivers to send mode and get in line three meters apart. The leader goes along the line with the transceiver in either group test mode or search mode. They should ski past at a distance of one meter. Now we're going to have a look at the different stages in an avalanche search. Take out your transceivers and look at the back. You should have diagrams explaining how to carry out a search. First you try to detect the initial signal. Then you do an approximate search, then a precise search. After that you start probing, then you dig. In a big group, one person should be designated to look for surface clues and check if anyone's buried beneath them. A good training exercise for locating the first signal can be carried out as follows. The leader chooses an area away from other people to avoid interference. The participants get in line 40 meters apart so they can cover the entire area of the simulated avalanche. The leader stays in send mode and skis down about 100 meters to simulate an avalanche victim. The participants descend the fall line, staying the same distance apart until one of them detects the signal. Then they follow the indicators on their transceiver. It's important to hold the transceiver flat against your ear like this until you detect the first signal. This is the initial stage of the search. If the person searching is on their own, they should first alert the rescue services, then concentrate on searching with their transceiver. They descend the slope in a zigzag pattern with 40 meters between each turn. As soon as you get a signal, you start the approximate search. Follow the direction and distance indicators, the arrow and the number. Keep following these until the display reads 10. When the screen displays the number 10, the person searching slows down. Keep moving until you reach 3. At 3, they take off their skis and hold the transceiver at knee level. Carefully and methodically, they move the transceiver in a straight line, making sure it's always being held in the same direction. They find the place on the line where the number is lowest. As soon as the numbers start increasing, the person brings the transceiver back to the place where they found the minimum value always holding their transceiver in the same direction. They mark this point with their ski pole or another object. The person starts probing next to the ski pole, then moves around it in an ever-increasing rectangular pattern with 25 centimetre intervals between each hole. They stop probing as soon as they feel the victim. The probe should be left in place. The person searching should then stand up and use the mark function to make sure there's no one else buried in the vicinity. Improvements in transceiver technology have made the digging phase the longest part of the rescue procedure. It's important to organise everyone properly to make this as effective as possible. The main digger starts at the probe. The others get in a line, one behind the other, at a shovel length distance apart. The 
café un peu. Manu, you take over as main digger. This system is most effective when everyone changes position every two minutes. Voilà, mets-toi bien ici. Taking turns in each position is the fastest way to dig down to the victim. Each person throws the debris behind them while also digging out their own zone. So now we've almost reached the victim, we're going to slow down a bit. We want two people in front and we're going to shorten the handles of our shovels. Manu, you do it with me. We're going to dig more carefully and try to find the victim's mouth. To help extract the person, we're going to dig out a cavity on either side. You two can help us. Do the same on the other side. So Manu and I are going to scrape away at the snow and put it in the grooves on either side. And you two are going to clear it. We're going to pretend the head is on the left hand side. Manu, dig more over here on the left, more on my side. As soon as the victim's head has been uncovered, their airways should be cleared and they should be insulated from the cold. It should always be assumed the victim has sustained traumatic injuries and care should be taken when moving them. <laughs>